and welcome back to Littles by Lyra. Let's make a cottagecore fairy lantern today. To start, go online and print off a couple images of fairy silhouettes, then fussy cut them out so that they're ready to decoupage onto a jar of your choice. This is a Bertoli marinara pasta sauce jar. I like the shape for it. It's with the little lump at the bottom and then it bows out. I just think it's got a, a mushroomy feel, vibe if you will. <laughs> Go ahead and smooth some Mod Podge over the front and put your image in place and then tapping your brush to start. This will just get your fairy adhered to the jar and then swipe over it a couple few times with the paintbrush, uh, making sure Mod Podge covers the whole thing. You want to tap to begin with so that you don't smear the ink into the rest of the jar. Once you get a nice smooth coat, you can move on to the other side of the jar. Also, you only need one image if that's what you like. So I took these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and apparently they will adhere to wood, paper, plastic, glass, metal, you name it, it's there. So taking the blunt end of a popsicle stick, after I get my pieces cut out, I place it where I want it, making sure that it's exactly where I want it, push it down, and then rub gently with the popsicle stick. Then I peel the plastic up slowly and the transfer should stick in place. I noticed when I was doing this that it really, really stuck well to the Mod Podge. But once you put it over the glass, it wanted to stick immediately. This is what it looks like after all those rub-ons are put into place. Next, I have a sheet of tissue paper that I have cut down to the approximate dimensions of the jar. I made sure that it was short enough where it wouldn't cover the threads of the jar where you screw the lid on, and I made sure it was short enough where it wouldn't go over the end of the jar. So taking a little bit of the Mod Podge, I'm going to work in small sections at a time, and it's perfectly okay if the if the um, tissue paper crinkles a little bit because it'll add some texture. If I forgot to mention it before, and I think I did, wait till the Mod Podge dries before you adhere the rub-on transfers. Okay, back to what we're currently doing. So I've got a small section of Mod Podge put down on the glass, and I'm just gonna place the tissue paper over the top, pulling gently and smudging it down, smudging it down, pressing it down, sorry, with my fingertips. I'll work in small sections all the way around the jar until the entire jar, how many times can I say jar? Until the entire jar is covered with Mod Podge and the tissue paper. As you see here, I've got it uh, cut as close as I can to make the edges butt up against each other. Then when it's done, I will go back with more Mod Podge on my brush and brush over the top of all the tissue paper to make sure that there is nice adhesion between tissue paper and the glass. Then I'll set that aside to dry. Now I choose a mushroom to make into my fairy garden, something that gives me a little inspiration. We have the fly Yamanita, and you know what? Just look at the pictures. I'm not even gonna try to say what the names are. Latin is not my strong point. I did, however, decide to go with the Cortinarius violaceus as the mushroom theme for my jar. It's the purple one. I just thought, you know, that's really pretty and I don't often see purple mushrooms. So anyway, while that's drying, I'm going to take some aluminum foil and begin building out the mushroom cap on the lid of my jar. All you do is pull out a sheet, crinkle it up into a long snake, and then begin wrapping it around the jar lid. 
as you can see here, I just put it on there, make sure that it's not covering over the bottom because I want to have access to those threads to actually put the jar lid back into place. And I will just continue building the jar out until it's the width that I would like it. Using a little bit of masking tape, I just use that to close the seams between the aluminum foil. As we know from Ray Bradbury, paper burns at Fahrenheit 451, polymer clay cooks, well, Sculpey 3 cooks, which is what I'm using at 275, so there's no worry about it catching on fire while it's in the oven. Since I want to start building up the conical part of my mushroom, I'm going to take a little bit of tape and fold it over on itself and place a ball of aluminum foil over that. That'll keep the top part of the mushroom from falling off the top part of the jar while I'm working on it. Because, yeah, that becomes really frustrating. <laughs> So once that's all covered up, I got one more little piece. I think when all is said and done, I would have liked to have made this a little taller, and I think on future projects I will. Um, but hey, this is what I got. This is what I'm going with, so it works. I'm going to take a little bit more masking tape, and I'm just going to uh, adhere the last piece that I put on there. This will help with, obviously, it sticking together, but when we go ahead and put the clay on it, it'll make a slightly smoother base on our mushroom cap armature. Just showing you here what it looks like, and I took a piece of polymer clay. I took purple, black, and red, mixed it together till I got that burgundy wine color, and then I'm gonna put the mushroom cap down on the top, press down lightly so I can get a pattern for what it looks like when I adhere it to the top and just cut off the excess clay. I make sure to do around the outside, of course, and I do the inside so that the inner portion of the jar lid will still screw down onto my jar. Basically on here, you see, I'm just using a butter knife. I'm trying to use, you know, everyday tools that everyone should have around their house. So I've got my donut shape cut out. And in order to adhere the clay to the foil, I am taking some translucent liquid Sculpey, which is basically liquid gold when it comes to polymer clay. It, um, adheres everything together. If your clay pieces break, you can use it to glue them back together. You can use it as a super glue to put dry clay to wet clay. You can use it to put dry clay to dry clay. You can use it to put clay to something that's not clay. I place it on the foil and begin to smooth it out. Incidentally, if you didn't watch my Polymer 101 clay tutorial, I think you should because it was really good. But it also mentioned that if you use something for clay, it becomes clay dedicated. That means if you use a food item to work on your clay, do not use it for food anymore. Here you see I'm just tapping in the gills of the mushroom cap, which is the little lines underneath the mushroom, with the back of the butter knife. Next, I'm going to pre-bake my clay 275 for 5 to 10 minutes so that I can begin working on the rest of the clay portions without losing the texture I added for the gills. Uh, you can fully bake it, but you don't really need to. Obviously, let it cool before you begin the next steps. 275 won't burn your hands off, but it's definitely uncomfortable. I'm taking some more of that translucent liquid Sculpey and I'm just covering the mushroom cap. Down below, you see I have a sheet of just solid purple clay rolled out and it was just straight out of the package purple. You can add different colors to it to make it, I don't know, whatever shade you like. If you've got some extra TLS, 
translucent liquid Sculpey on your fingers. You can put it onto the clay. It won't hurt anything. And I'm going to just stretch the clay out so that it will cover the entirety of the mushroom cap. I used a clay roller and it is not wide enough to make a full circle to cover the uh, mushroom cap dome. I place that on there and begin pulling gently until the clay begins to rip away. This will give me some nice edges to smooth around to the front of the clay portion that's already been baked, the gills. Once that's all seated in place, you notice I got a little bit of a, a bump there that I'm not thrilled with. I'm gonna take a toothbrush. Obviously it's clay dedicated. This will never go in a mouth again and just begin tapping. This will cover up that bump and add some really nice texture to the top of the mushroom. And here I'm just showing you. There are lumps and bumps, but this is cottage core. It's out in nature. It's not perfect, and that's fine. I have some loose eyeshadow from the Dollar Tree. I just poured it into a little container that I can put my blush brush into. And I'm just going to lightly brush over the top of the mushroom cap. Now I will bake according to package instructions. So while that's baking, I'm gonna take my jar, all of the Mod Podge is dry, and I'm gonna flip it over and place a piece of aluminum foil over the bottom. Then I'll begin crinkling up the edges to add sort of a, uh, a widened base for the fairy jar. This, op this is optional, you don't have to do it, but I wanted to play with clay some more, and this is a perfect way to do it. So I'll go ahead and get all of the foil seated, and then when I've got as much of the air bubbles out as I can, I'll just flip it over and begin pushing the aluminum foil up close to the base of the jar, like so. When you have all of your foil put into place, you can begin uh, with a sheet of clay. I'm choosing just plain green, and translucent liquid Sculpey, of course, to uh, adhere it to the bottom and sides of the jar. If you don't like the feeling of the liquid Sculpey, and basically it feels like a really thick glue, you can use a paintbrush, but it's extremely difficult to get out of the paint bristles, so that will become a designated clay tool, which is fine. Um, it doesn't harden or anything just wrap it in a piece of plastic and use it for applying your translucent sculpey as needed all right so i showed you i've got the bottom adhered to the uh, green clay and then i'm just wrapping it around up the sides and if it doesn't completely cover the foil i'll just pull off some edges of the clay and place it on there I'm not going to worry about smoothing it because we're about to texture and you won't notice it once the uh, texturing begins. Do your best to keep any air bubbles out from underneath of the clay. Polymer clay and air don't get on well and it would be terrible if your project didn't sit flush anymore. So to texture, we're gonna take just a little ball of aluminum foil and just begin rolling it and pouncing it along the clay to give it the texture that we want. I think this is great for making a, uh, a grassy texture. And here I'm showing you, you know, I've got the clay up along the bottom and it looks pretty. <laughs> so. I baked that according to packaging instructions, and now I am just going to show you with my Waverly chalk paint in the color of moss, celery, and hazelnut. I will take one of the Dollar Tree stencil brushes, and I'm just going to lightly coat the bottom, like a dry brush effect. This will mute down some of that bright, bright green and it will give highlights and lowlights to all the different texturing that we've done. 
The first one was moss. This one is, well, <laughs> celery. Sorry, I forgot. And, and the third one is the hazelnut. And I go the lightest with the hazelnut because I'd like this to be more green than brown. You know, grassier than dirtier. If you hear me sniffle again, I apologize. It's a bad allergy day. So you notice up at the top here that the tissue paper didn't go all the way up. I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color of lavender and I added some crimson and some ocean to it until I got a darker color than the normal lavender. It's more of, of a pink tone. I'm just going to dry brush along the top so that the colors blend. Now, if you follow it along and you want to use the Merlot color like we used for the gills, Waverly does make an actual, it's called Merlot color, and you can use that. But I wanted to go for as many purples as I could. Then, in any empty spaces on the jar, over top of the Mod Podged tissue paper, I'm just going to dry brush a little more of that purple on there. And if I got any paint onto the threads of the jar, I wiped it off using a baby wipe. Next, I'm gonna take some Spanish moss and using the tip of a paintbrush, I'm just going to push the moss down into that little bubbled out part down at the bottom of the jar. I have these little plastic flowers that my sister-in-law gifted me. I believe they were from Hobby Lobby. Um, and I'm gonna place them around the inside of the jar, trying to get them as close to the glass as I can. Once I have those placed in where I'd like them, I have a string of fairy lights, also from the Dollar Tree, that I just wind around the battery pack and place it in there. You can use a battery-operated tea light, and that'll give a flickering effect, but the fairy lights are definitely brighter and they won't show off the decorations that you put into the jar better. I'd like to throw in here real quick and real importantly don't use real fire in here that would be bad it would break your project and possibly burn your house down and nobody wants that i decided to pull the purple color up into the top of the mushroom cap so using the rounded end of a paintbrush i'm just going to dip it into the uh, purple colored paint that I mixed and just make polka dots around the top of the fairy lantern, the mushroom cap. Then I have these butterfly stickers from the Dollar Tree. I will peel one off and fold the top portion of the wings to give it a flying effect. And just using a little bit of Fix all adhesive, I will glue it up to the top of the jar. You can use hot glue for this, but fix all, as always, is a more permanent hold. Perhaps a little bit of fix all and a little bit of hot glue for that instant and permanent hold. Here I'm just looking to see where I'd like it placed, and I'll place the butterfly there. And there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. It was a lot of fun to make and my stepchild has requested one done in a dragon theme. So that's next on my plate. If you'd like to see it, let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have a great week. Bye.